Imagine, this is you, but then you get infected with the coronavirus. Now you want to know who will win this battle. Your body or the virus? Your body makes antibodies against the virus. But the virus tries to hide in your cells and replicate very fast. If the antibodies made by you are specific enough, they can block the virus by a process called neutralization. Then the virus cannot infect the cell anymore. So, you want to know how much antibodies you have in your body and if they can neutralize the virus. This can be measured with the virus neutralization assay, which looks thus at the number and the specificity of the antibodies. Now, you might be wondering, how does this work? There are three basic steps to perform a neutralization assay. One, you first take the serum of the infected patient, which contains the antibodies. Then we will make different dilutions of the serum, so we can see later in which dilution the antibodies still have a neutralizing effect. Step two is the addition of virus to the different dilutions of the serum. This will be incubated for one hour and the neutralizing antibodies will bind to the virus. Thereafter, it will be tested how infectious the virus is. This can be done via a plaque assay. Let us zoom into the methods. Virus neutralization is a specialized type of immunoassay because it does not detect all antigen antibody reactions. In the serum from the infected patient, there is not only the neutralizing antibody, but also other antibodies. These other antibodies might also be able to bind the virus, but do not block its uptake into the cell, while the neutralizing antibodies can block this uptake. This is important to know, because related viruses might share common antigens, but they may, might not be neutralized after binding the same antibody. They might need another antibody too. So, then we have the different serial dilutions of the patient serum with the antibodies and the virus. And we also have a control tube with no antibodies, just the virus, for comparison. One of the methods to check the infectiousness of the virus is a plaque assay. These antibody-virus mixtures will then be added to confluent cell culture plates containing agarose, which blocks the spreading of the virus to non-neighboring cells. This will be incubated for two to three days. What happens then is that the virus particles that are not neutralized infect the cell culture. Each virus particle can only spread to its neighboring cells due to the agarose. So one virus particle will cause an area of infected and thus dead cells. This is called a plaque forming unit or PFU. The virus particles that are neutralized are not able to infect the cell anymore. Then we fixate and stain the cell culture. The dead cells are not colored and thus each white round is a plaque forming unit. What we can see then is that when we have a lot of neutralizing antibodies, no plaques will be formed and all the virus is neutralized. When we get in a higher dilution, there are less neutralizing antibodies and thus not all the virus is neutralized, as we can see at the five plaque forming units here. When we dilute even more, there is even less neutralizing antibody and there are more unneutralized virus particles that in can infect the cells. If we compare this to the infection with a normal virus, we can see that almost all the cells are gone. This person has this neutralizing antibodies against the virus. So, now we know what a virus neutralizing assay is, why would we want to know how much neutralizing antibodies a person has? If you are, for example, battling the viral infection very well and you have produced a lot of antibodies, these antibodies can be given to a person that's not battling the infection so well to make them better again. In clinical trials, this has worked for 3 out of 5 persons that had a severe infection and were on the intensive care. But more studies should be conducted to the effectiveness of this method in COVID-19 persons. Moreover, the neutralization assay is also used during vaccine testing. 
When a person is vaccinated, we want to know if this virus results in the production of enough neutralizing antibodies to stop the viral infection. A safe method to do this is with a virus neutralization assay. Thus, a virus neutralization assay gives us insight about the battle between the virus and the antibody. Let's hope that in most cases, the antibody wins.